did not conflict with James Duffy's presentation. Um, looking at the NASM archives for stuff on Harry Stein because it was well worth the time I spent in his presentation. And thanks to James for that. Uh, also, um, the information that um, Chris Pearson is providing on the beginnings of uh, high power rocketry is also very, very interesting. So I'm just grateful that my presentation is getting over that into those. So at least I got to see a couple of things that I'd like to see while presenting here as well. Okay, so with that, um, I'll say welcome to uh, creating rocket graphics with decal and vital mediums. And uh, my name is Randy Gilbert. I have been flying rockets for 49 years. And uh, I've worked for Century Engineering and Quest Aerospace, although it was kind of in behind the scenes roles in both places. Uh, I built a lot of uh, shell models for Quest, as well as uh, doing some prototype work for Quest on both their, uh, their mini motor line of uh, kits, the plastic models, the, the Saturn. And the uh, <coughs> all of the all of the little ones. In fact, I prototyped all of them for Bill. And uh, so, if you happen to be at that trade show, those were my rockets. So, at any rate, um, my passion is to build good-looking rockets. I, I just love to have a good time building good-looking rockets. And <clears throat> a little bit about this presentation. Uh, hopefully, it will enhance your knowledge on how to create professional quality decal and vinyl media graphics for your rockets using a household age general laser printer. And what it's not going to teach you is graphic arts. Okay, so I'm not here to try and teach you everything there is to know about Photoshop or uh, any other graphics program for that matter. Let's get started. We'll talk about a little bit of decal history <coughs> overview here. Decals Go back and when you when you first talked about decals, they were screen printed, okay? And some of you may be familiar with how screen printing works, some not, but it's a very elaborate process. Painstaking, time consuming, um, quite requires screen. a lot of process knowledge, okay? Um, <clears throat> then decals evolved into being offset print. So they would print these heavy inks on mylar or vinyl or other uh, substrates and actually run them through a press with rollers. Um, then we get into second generation printing. It's what I call second generation printing, which is this is the kind of printing that you can do at home. Okay? Yeah, most all of us started out with buying full sheets of Avery label stock and running them through our printer, whether it was inkjet or dot matrix if you're really ancient like I am, um, <clears throat> and <coughs> printing those things out and, and stripping them off and putting them on the models, okay? In fact, for some of the Quest uh, Micromax models, I actually had to print them on paper and, and uh, then paste them onto the prototypes that they took to the shelves. Because we just didn't have the technology back then to do decals at home like we do today. So what we're going to concentrate on here is home printing, second generation stuff, stuff that you can proof, stuff, stuff that you can make in your inkjet or home laser printer. All of which are in those models over there. Yes, all of which, all of these models were done at home. Okay. Um, we'll talk a little bit about tools and materials to do your design work. Personally, I used PowerPoint because I paid for an office license. PowerPoint came with it, and it does great graphics. Okay, so if you can use PowerPoint, you can make these decals because they were all made with PowerPoint. Um, you need to use Photoshop or something like it. I use a freeware app called GIMP. Um, GIMP is very capable and probably does an awful lot of what Photoshop would do for you, and it's absolutely free. 
Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about decal media. We've got water slide in white and clear. We've got vinyl in white and clear. And we have other substrates which are metallic and holographic. And I just remembered that I forgot to put out my samples here to show you. Here, this is the stuff. Clear water slide decal paper. Silver adhesive polyester, which is printable in an inkjet printer. Inkjet ultra clean clear vinyl. The uh, rocket that looks like an atlas um, is all done in vinyl with the uh, exception of the small decals up on the top. Inkjet white. So this is when you've got a white background behind your colors. Okay, this has a white substrate. And back to inkjet clear. Okay, so six different kinds of media. Oh, uh, one of those is for laser. Okay. Are any of the others Glad you asked that question, Pam. You can buy these from a place called texascraft.com. <laughs> okay? That's where I buy the stuff. It's good. It works. The only, the only problem I have with their product is that the first batch of laser <coughs> paper that I bought went through my home laser printer, and the second package I bought from them did not. So, you're going to invest $13 in a package of 10 sheets of paper, and you get it, and it won't go through your printer. That's a problem for you. Did it damage the printer? Um, no, it gets clogged in my printer. Okay, so these are some of the pitfalls that you have to look out for. All right? And what it actually has to do with more than anything is it's actually the thickness of the paper that stops it from going through the printer. It's not that the printer won't pick it up, it will. It just won't get through the paper path. Is it thicker than cardstock? No, it's not. Um, but again, it is all dependent on your, paper, your printer's manufacturer and the tolerances for paper that they put on it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get into the presentation here. Is it the thickness that's the problem, or is it? Does it also have to do with the texture of the paper? I'm sorry, all about the thickness? Is, is it all about the thickness, or is it the texture of the paper influence how it gets to the um, No, it's actually, the texture of the paper is actually very much like photographic paper, if you've used it, check photographic paper. It has very much a finish like that, but um, it's more about the weight of the um, substrate and the, the media of the paper itself. The and it going through the feed path. But like I said, we'll talk about that. Let's talk about tools. Yeah, the slide got broken on me. Okay. Anyways, um, <clears throat> we got cutting tools, hobby knives, scissors, wetting tools, dish soap, lubricating jelly, water-based lubricant. Okay. You wonder. You say, I've, I've never heard of that before. You may not have. It may have been something that I stumbled upon. Okay. But if you're going to try to apply a decal that's the size of that red and black dot thing around the top of that Funko Transport Laboratory, you need lots of lubrication to keep that thing slipping around until you finally get it placed where you want it. You can enhance that lubrication by using a little water-soluble jelly, and it works great. Just thin it out with a little bit of water, smear it on there, float the decal onto it, and then spread it out. Works great. And then application. <clears throat> you're gonna want tweezers for your small work, and you're gonna need tissue or paper towel to blot with. Okay, and I say blot because I don't want you to rub. I'll show you what happens when you rub. <coughs> 
Trade-offs on home printed decals, advantages, customization. If you can think, if you can dream it, you can do it, okay? <coughs> Material choice. <clears throat> Lots of choices. Okay? You're only limited by your credit card. Workability. You can choose whatever you want, you know? If you've got a big rocket and you want to create a big graphic, do it in vinyl. That would be my first recommendation because a whole lot easier to place, a whole lot easier to replace if you don't get it in the right place the first time. Okay? Durability, there's pluses and minuses. Depends on how you're going to finish it. Okay? A lot of these decal papers can simply be finished by a coat of clear or matte spray. Your choice. The company also sells a decal fixative, which, as far as I'm concerned, my jury is still out on it. It works. It does what they say it'll do. I'm not sure it's any better or any worse than clear or matte spray. Okay? But they get $12 a can for that, and clear or matte spray costs about $4 a can, so you figure it out. <clears throat> the appearance. It's great for upscales, what can I say? Okay. Um, any old timers, boats, and a screaming eagle when you were a kid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Love One of my favorite model rockets, okay? Love the launcher on the battery. Yeah, me too. I don't know if I'm ever going to make the launcher and the battery to go with this one, okay? <laughs> Upscale it, it'd be cool. But it would be fun. Yeah, it would be fun. There's no question about it. Be even, be even more fun to use a car battery for the battery and then just put it inside the Rayovac battery case, right? All right. <clears throat> so you get an idea, and, and for those of you who weren't around when this rocket was new, the original rocket was about 16 inches tall and uh, had a number eight body tube, which is smaller in diameter than a Estes PT-50. <coughs> okay? This particular model is 2.6 inches in diameter and <clears throat> is um, F or G powered and has already been flown successfully. Uh, it was my first attempt with the uh, silver-backed material. And if you look at it closely, you can see that it's not quite perfect, but it was good enough for my first attempt. And I learned a lot doing it. Okay, and we'll talk about the pitfalls again. Well, just real quick. Yes. You know, that silver back media, and you printed the red and blue on the silver. Yes. In an inkjet. In an inkjet printer. In a, That's important. In a plain old, everyday Epson inkjet printer. You run the silver media through it, you print blue and red on it. So That's what you get out. Silver media and then print little embossed lines to fake corrugations on a old Joe too. You can fake them. Yeah, because look at the fake corrugations I've got on that white one on the end there. Okay? If you pass, I feel free, you know, you folks can look at these or I'll pass a couple of them around, you know. I mean, I don't have any problem with people handling my rockets. Okay, you can see that this one's made to look like it's embossed when it's not embossed. Very good point, because that's what I'm looking for. Okay, yeah. You can, like I say, you know, if you can, if you can dream it, you can do it with this stuff. It's kind of fun, you know, because just, you know, let your mind run. you know, what do you want to, what do you want to do? And you can do a lot of cool stuff that you may not have seen before. Because if you do it in PowerPoint, you've got a lot of shading tools that you can work with. And that can be fun too. So, okay, disadvantages. The stuff's expensive. Okay? I put a buck and a half a sheet up there. Yeah, some of it is a buck and a half a sheet, some a little less. By the time you had shipping to it, it's probably more like $1.65 or $1.70, okay? The point is you don't want to waste a lot of it. <laughs> what I do most times, I print a, a sheet of standard paper with my decals on it, and then I 
tape fit them around the jacket <coughs> to make sure that the decal is going to be what I want it to be. And then I use the expensive stuff. <laughs> okay? But again, we'll talk about that. Okay? And the other, the other drawback which we already touched on was thick media. Okay? Like I told you, the first package of laser printable media that I got from them went through my printer with no problem. I got great results. I ordered another package, jams my printer every time. So, you know, I mean, after you go through 10 sheets of paper and clear up 10 paper jams in your laser printer, you just kind of go, yeah, all right? I even took the paper to, um, like, Office Max, Office Depot, FedEx Office. <clears throat> they won't run the stuff through their printer. They say it's too thick. Now that's an industrial laser printer made by Canon or Kyocera or whomever. And they won't run the stuff through their laser printer because they say it's too thick. Now that didn't stop them from running a couple of test sheets before they told me that their printer told them it was too thick. And I still paid them for the test sheets and the test sheets were fine by the way. You know, and they were usable. But they wouldn't print any more decals for me. Did they have an alternate suggestion of something else you could use? No, nothing at all. I, you know, I mean, I, I talked to them about it. I said, well, look, it just, it just printed this stuff. Why won't you print any more? Oh, because the machine says it's not good for it. <laughs> okay, if that's your criteria, <laughs> it's your machine, not mine, right? So, that doesn't mean that you can't find a printer that has a zero graphic machine that won't print the media. Okay? They're out there. I know they are. Let's talk about choosing the graphic material. The vinyl is suitable for large graphics and body wraps. That rocket that's being passed around is vinyl. Most all the decals on it are vinyl, with, with very few exceptions. Okay? You can tell they're vinyl because they're thicker. You can actually feel the, uh, the thickness of it with a fingernail, okay? Where, you know, standard water decals, you can tell they're there, but, you know, there's no real <coughs> perceptible difference. <clears throat> Temporary graphics. Some kinds of vinyl media are better suited than others. Yeah, this company makes like three different kinds of vinyl media. They make white vinyl, they make clear vinyl, they make clear vinyl that's extra sticky and plain old sticky clear vinyl. So you can pick whatever you want. Application issues. <clears throat> yes, it does not stick well to flat paint. Okay? Some of the most recent or the more recent uh, primers are offering a very nice smooth finish with flat primer. However, my experience has proven that when you do a vinyl decal on that surface, it will stick when the stick them on the back of the decal is fresh. And then the older it gets, the longer the more of the edges will peel up and curl. Okay? Yeah. And dealing with flat paints and decals and stuff on cars, rockets, or other type of that you're going to put uh, graphics on. I've always been taught that you gloss it, put the decals on, and flatten it. Yeah, yeah, that is the solution to the problem. Like flat decal to my car. Right. Yeah, that is the solution to the problem. By the way, is you gloss it, apply the decal, and then you flatten it. Okay. It's just a long way to go. Okay. If we're trying to keep it simple. That's a long way to go. If end result is your primary importance, then it's not so long way to go. It's just a process question. Water slide decals. Smaller graphics is what I recommend them for. Okay? Any of you who have tried to build <coughs> an Estes Mega Dur Red Max with that monstrous body wrap decal know what I'm talking about. That thing is a beast. 
And if you don't know how to apply a large water slide decal like that, chances are, and I know many of you have, screwed it up and then written to Estes, chastening them for the size of that decal, as well you should, and then either paying them or waiting for them to send you a new decal. Or a sticker shot to make them one. That's right. A lot of folks have done that, you know, as, as evidenced on Facebook and other places. Yeah, a lot of folks just go, I'm not playing with this water slide decal anymore. We'll go to Sticker Shack and get a final one. <laughs> Done. <laughs> right? Hey, it works. Why not? White backed paper. Okay? We're talking about the white backed substrates. Okay? It comes in vinyl, comes in water slide. Get the white backed substrate. Great for doing American flags. A little less, a little, little more trouble for doing stars and bars because you've got to cut close to the edge of the stars and bars to eliminate all the white around it. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? You've got the blue outline on the stars and bars, right? If you don't cut right up to the edge of the blue outline, you're going to have white outline on your blue outline. All right? We'll talk about that some more, too. Let's talk about printing this stuff, okay? Print this paper. For inkjet, your printer settings need to be set to the thickest paper possible for your printer. Try the envelope setting. A lot of these printers have built-in sensors and settings that you can't access from the control panel on the printer. I found this out from Epson when I called their tech support one time. I said, how do I get this thing just to open up the paper path as wide as it'll go? They said, send a demo. That'll make the widest paper path we can fit through it. So <clears throat> try envelope. Don't use best quality. Okay? As, as much as I know, you're thinking, yeah, I want that 1600 by 1600 DPI. No, go come come back one step, okay? Go for 600 by 1200 or 800 by 1200. Don't go for the highest quality. Go for the next level down. You'll be happier with your result. And make sure that you've loaded the media into your printer according to the instructions. There is nothing quite as frustrating as putting the media in the printer and wasting all that ink to print a page to find out that you've printed your graphics on the back of the sheet of paper, which will more or less render the sheet of paper useless. Uh, not so much vinyl, but yeah, as far as the water soluble stuff is concerned, yeah, it's gonna be, you just need to crumple it up and throw it away. <laughs> Get over it, it's not gonna work. For lasers. When you're printing the lasers, the media thickness, again, is a problem. Again, set your printer for an envelope, okay? If you can't set it for an envelope, set it for a brochure paper, something like cardstock, okay? You want it to open that paper path just as much as possible. And as I said before, you may have to find a local color copy shop and in my experience, certain copiers like Office Max and FedEx Office would attempt it and then tell me to go away. So that was that was my experience in Troy, Michigan. Yeah, Pam. I was just wondering if you remember how much they charged you to print those that they, that they uh, Well they <laughs> they charge you per page, just like if they furnish the paper. So you're furnishing the paper and they're charging the same price that they would if they furnished the paper. So there you go, okay? So, you know, I wish I could tell you how much per page it was, but I don't remember. More than a buck. I know that. It was more than a dollar a page, yes. Kind of makes you lament for uh, quite a long time ago. I was working for a place that did a lot of stuff with laser printers. 
Kiyosera that had a line of printers that had a true bypass paper feed on the back with exit on the front. So your shaft went through absolutely flat, no turns, no bends in the paper path, no, you know, none of that from picking. No, I, I, I know you're right, and I know Kiyosera makes that because that's an industrial printer. Yep. Yep. Yeah, my, my HP does. Right. Yeah, yeah what, what, if, what you're looking for essentially is you're looking for a print shop that has that industrial printer, that straight path printer. Okay? So if you're going to call uh, printing companies in your neighborhood and ask them if they've got a zero graphic printer, ask them if they've got a straight path printer. That's what they're after. Or that's what you are after. Okay? <coughs> Thanks for bringing that up. That's a good point. White media, okay, and I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. Um, think backwards when you're using white media, okay? Here's a cool thing. Those of you that are old enough, like, remember that the Estes Bluebird Zero kit came with a white decal that said Bluebird Zero. And those white letters were applied on the blue part of the body, which really popped. It just looked great, you know? And so <clears throat> I was happy when, when uh, just before our friend Carl McLaughlin passed away at Semrock, when he brought out the Bluebird Zero, one of my favorite rockets of all time, right up there with the Blue Mac, or Red Max, excuse me. Pretty and slip. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Somebody made a blue mix, didn't they? Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, um, what I did was I took a piece of the white decal paper, found the blue that matched the paint that I was using, and put that blue, put a blue box on the page behind the paint, behind the words Bluebird Zero, which I then changed to white. So when you print it out, you get a box of, you get white letters on a blue background, and then you cut out the whole blue background, and you lay that down on the rocket. I took that to Naren. <laughs> it was the last Naren that Carl attended. And I showed him that rocket, he goes, that's not ours. I went, yeah, it is. I said, it's got my decal on it. And he goes, we didn't provide a white decal. I said, I know you didn't, <laughs> but I did. So, I'll show you that example a little later. All right, creating your own graphics. My experience is using PowerPoint and GIMP, okay? I can't tell you all the tricks and traps, okay? I can tell you that if you spend a little time learning how to use GIMP, you will not regret it because you will learn how to change those graphics and how to hook them together and take them apart and cut them and make them fit on a single page of paper, okay? Another thing that I recommend, if you're a kit builder, scan your decals before you build your kit, okay? It takes two minutes, just do it, okay? You'd be glad you did. Out there on the internet is a wonderful treasure trove of old kit decals that we can have just for the downloading. And it's great. Some of those scans are really good, some of them not so much. But the ones that are not so much, that's when you're going to wish you knew how to use GIMP. Because GIMP is going to help you change the color and the contrast of those items back to what they should be. Yes, sir? On that point, I just would recommend anybody scanning their own decals, um, put a ruler on your scanner or something like that so you have on the scan an indication of the exact scale. Yeah. And you or somebody else who makes use of that scan Absolutely. later will thank you for that. He makes a great point. And this is, you know, if you're scanning the fins that came out of the kit or if you're scanning the decals that come out of the kit, put a, put a one inch long line on something and then label it one inch. Okay? Or like one of the little six inch if, steel. Yeah, if you could find a small ruler, then they're, they're getting harder to find because they're not they're not free advertising like they used to be. Okay? 
Just put that on the on the uh, scanner at the same time. When you scan the scan the decal, scan the ruler right with it. You're all set. Mark. Just sometimes, and this this goes back to when I used to work for Todd Schwein. If uh, if you're really being fussy and you're worried about x-axis not quite being y-axis, just any put a quarter on it. It's a known object. You, you'll always got you always have a quarter's worth of room on your scan bed, and that way you've got an object of known size in both dimensions. Yes. But again. How obsessive compulsive do you want to be? <laughs> yeah, you and me too. So, you know, I understand. Um, the thing that you'll find most often when you're downloading graphics from the internet is that they weren't scanned squarely to begin with. Okay, they'll they'll be a little bit off, a little bit tilted to one side or the other. Okay, that's just really annoying. Okay, the nice part about that is if you import it into PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, you can rotate it. You can rotate an object by one degree increments. Now, sometimes one degree is too much. Sometimes not enough. But you know, you can you can get closer. Okay. If you need to get closer than that, you're going to have to use the GIMP and the free rotate tool that's in the GIMP. Okay. Pardon me. The Alt key. I'm sorry. If you you can you can get rid of your one degree limitation by holding down the Alt. The Alt key? The Alt key. That'll do it. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> good good tip. Hold down the Alt key while I'm rotating it. Yeah. And that completely obliterates the one degree thing. Excellent. Thank you. There's, there's also a... See? This is a deal. I give the presentation and I learn something. <coughs> for, for those of you using Macintoshes, there's a program called Graphic Converter. And I'm sure there's probably other software that has it too, but has a... A command where you can you can trace a line and it will rotate it to make that line vertical or horizontal. So what program is it? Uh, graphic converter. Yes. So if you've got something as I used to use graphic converter when I was using Mac all the time. Yeah. Along the line and it rotates. Right. It, so yep. I remember. That. I recall that. Yep. You know, it's not that I don't like Macs, folks. I I have a PC and it just I make it work for me. Okay. I pay for it. It works for me. So. Okay, um, in some cases you're going to want to trace those decals because you're not going to like the edges that come down in the downloads. So you know, pull them into PowerPoint. This is where it gets a little dicey sometimes. Some of the fonts are old or obscure. And then you're going to have to go out <coughs> to a font website and dig through pages and pages of fonts trying to find the one that's the closest match to what you want. <laughs> and that really gets tiring. But, you know, if you want exactly what you want, you know, you've got to figure out what's the effort. What's it going to cost you, okay? The Internet's your oyster. We talked about the fonts. Get creative, okay? Be cheap. Do like I did. Fit it all on one page, you know? Hey, you're paying for all that paper. Get to the use out of it, right? Even when I'm doing, you know, if I was just doing these larger decals for a kit, I would still find something to fill the rest of that page. You know, do stars and bars, do flags, do stripes, do roll patterns, anything. You're any yard number. You know, yeah, you're any yard number, yeah, which I, I do a lot of any yard numbers too. Okay? <clears throat> Alright, we talked about scanning all your new kit decals. Just some examples of decals that I've created. Um, finishing your graphics. Folks, you got to give the ink time to dry. It comes out and I know it looks dry and it may even feel dry to the touch. It's not. Give it at least overnight, if not 24 hours, okay? It doesn't apply with laser, of course, right? Because when a laser comes out, it's polyethylene that's already been bonded to the substrate, right? Called so, fused. I'm sorry? Commonly called fused. Yes, fused. Okay. Um, the Buzzilla decal, or the Buzzkilla decal that you're looking at, um, I printed on two sheets of eight and a half by 11. It was done on clear vinyl. And I'll show you a picture of that rocket a little later. 
the scorpion page uh, were graphics of my own design. And again, you can see that in the corner there, I've got your Fat Max, which is, an, which is a fat boy that uh, I put a 29 millimeter motor mount in and painted it red and made it look like a red Max, okay? But it's called the Fat Max. Okay? So once they're dry, you gotta fix the ink. Like I said before, you need just clear, clear spray, glossy, matte spray, or you can use a specialty fixative that they charge $12 a can for. And like I said, my my personal jury's still out on the $12 a can stuff. I don't know. <coughs> what, what have you used? Do you use uh, like a crown acrylic or something that doesn't yellow? Yeah. Yeah. Something yellow. A lot of guys use like feature. I'm sorry, the question was? For your clear sprays, what are you using? I mean, because I know oh, I'm using yellow, acrylics are okay. Some guys use feature yeah. polish. What I've used with good results is I've used Cryon Clear. Um, I've also used um, Rust-Oleum Painter's Choice, uh, which is available at Meyer and Home Depot and Target and Lord knows and, and Walmart and every place on else. A, on a side thing, I've been worried about the fact that Cryon changed all the chemicals. Everybody did. Yeah. I've used Krylon Clear without any yellowing for over 12 years on stuff I've done on some planes and rockets. Yeah. But now everything's all tamed. I know. I don't know what to tell you. We're going to wait to see. Are all of our rockets going to turn yellow one of these days? It just has a year to get regular fluorescent orange back again from them at the Walmart. There's also multiple Krylon Clear. <coughs> okay. Their entire product. So, <clears throat> so once you print them, let them dry, preferably eight hours or more. Then spray them. Then let them dry at least another four hours. Then you can start hacking them up and putting them in water. Okay? Unless it's vinyl, but you don't need to put water in water. Okay, here comes the eye chart of the presentation. The application of the decal. We're going to talk about the decal size, which media you used, vinyl or water what the surface of the rocket is like. Actually, we've talked about all those things already. We talked about, you know, taking the flat surface, spraying it, make it glossy, then put on the decal, then spray it again to make it matte, okay? Application. What size bowl or tray you're gonna need? Larger is better, okay? You want some kind of bowl or tray that is not going to force your decal into a tight curl, okay? If you want, you want to lay it in there. If it's going to curl, let it curl, okay? But when it uncurls, you want it to lay kind of flat. So, you know, you don't want to you don't want to put it in a cereal bowl, right? Not if the decal's this big. Okay. Nice big long cooking dishes. I'm sorry. Big long cooking dishes. That works perfectly. <laughs> Baking tall dishes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Tall yeah. Tall yeah. Tall yeah. yeah. That's what I use. A brownie. I use a family size brownie dish, like the nine by thirteen. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, also, uh, Tupperware trays like that size work good too. So, water temperature, barely lukewarm. I'm not talking about warm. I'm talking about just not cold. Okay. Baby bottle temperature? No, too warm. That's lukewarm. Yeah, too Blue warm temperature. Yeah, just just not cold. Okay, kind of room temperature, maybe just a little warmer than room temperature, okay? Yeah, don't use anything that's hot, okay? If it's hot, it's gonna be disastrous, okay? Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna take your substrate and everything and it's gonna, first of all, it's gonna practically rip it off the backing paper and then it's gonna curl up so tightly that you'll never pull it apart. You will have just wasted all that time and effort that you put into making your decal, okay? One or two drops of dishwashing detergent. Four drops if you're using vinyl, okay? Put the solution on what <coughs> you're going to apply the decal on. In other words, put it on the rocket, put it on the decal. Keep the bowl full of stuff nearby so that if you run into trouble during the process, you can dip your hand in it, throw some more water on it, okay? just. You know, 
do that, but don't over wet the decal. Okay, and what do I mean by over wetting? You put the decal in the warm water, just barely warm, just not quite cold. Okay, if you leave it lay there until it separates from the backing, you've probably lost the war. Okay, you want it to curl up and then let it relax. When you try and nudge the decal a little bit with your finger, it should move freely. You shouldn't have to force it. Okay? You'll know if, if it's ready and you touch it with your finger, you'll see it move immediately. If you don't see it move, it's not ready to let go yet. So don't mess with it. Make sure the decal and the surface are wet enough. And again, this is all comes with trial and error. You just, you got to work at it, okay? I don't know what to tell you. The more you do it, the better at it you get. Cut big decals into smaller chunks. Yeah, I know that's the advice that Estes has been passing around for their large Mega Dur Red Max decal now. Just cut it into pieces <laughs> before you apply it. Okay. The water-based lubricant tip. Yeah, let's talk about that one for a minute. Okay. Five and a half inch diameter rocket takes one and a half sheets of decal paper to get around it. So you're not gonna make it in one pass, right? Here's a joint right here. <coughs> Here's a joint right here. Now you're saying, you could have moved those to the clear space. Yes, you're right, I could have. I should have. I'll be smarter about that next time, okay? But until I have to rebuild it because it gets crashed or smashed or, you know, dinged up somehow, this is gonna do, all right? So, glossy surface, water-based lubricant, thinned with water, <coughs> smeared all over the rocket, and this part I can't be, I can't emphasize enough, you need to leave the decal on the backing paper until it hits the body of the rocket. Slide it off, just like you were a kid sliding down a slide, that decal should look the same way sliding off that piece of paper onto the rocket. That was an old art from working with models back in the 60s where they told you how to get it and put it down in a bowl of paper bag. Right. They don't explain that anymore. No. No, it is, you know, unfortunately decal application is almost a lost art. You know, because it doesn't happen like we did when we were kids who had built model cars, right? Because now they're all busy tinkering with their cell phones. Randy, right. what kids can could afford you, to build models? Could you be more specific as to what this water-based lubricant is? <laughs> uh, you, can, well, you know where to buy it from. Come on, Bob. <laughs> okay, it starts with a <laughs> <W -I. laughs> It starts with a K and it ends with a Y. <laughs> and it comes in a tube. It's from Kentucky and you. And if you need a lot of it, it comes in a pump bottle. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so there's your entertainment for the evening, folks. <laughs> I'd say I'll be here all week, but I won't be. Okay. Slide that decal onto the, onto the rocket. Blot. Don't rub. Take that, take that tissue, that paper towel, whatever it is you're using it, and Dampen it a little bit in your decal water to begin with, okay? That'll help. And then blot with it. Don't rub with it. Rubbing is just a prescription for disaster. It moves the decal around. Yeah. Okay. And I'll show you another example of what happens when you rub and you don't blot, okay? Let's see. One of, 
play spins has a decal on it that's just kind of squirrely in one in one axis. And of course now I can't find it, nobody I want to, right? But trust me, it's there. Alright? I rubbed it and I stretched it. I stretched it in one area. So it's got it's got a hump in it. Okay? So just don't do it. Don't rub them. Block them. When you get bubbles under your decal, prick them with a pin. That's what you do. You know, just keep a safety pin around. Hold the safety pin, prick it at the edge. Rub the, you know, blot the bubble out. Okay? And then give the graphic time to dry on your rocket. <clears throat> All right? And again, I'd say, you know, give it at least a day, maybe two, before you spray it. So if we're building the scale model in the bathroom of a motel room before scale at Nara, we have to wait an actual day. We all know that there are um, reasons for expediency, right? <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Um, I told you earlier that I would show you pictures of some of the rockets. Um, there's Buzz Killa. That was the rocket I certified by level 2-4 back in November of this year. Um, those are the vinyl graphics. And there are some water slide graphics on that rocket as well. Uh, the splat that you see on the fin here is a water slide graphic. But um, the name is all vinyl. And that's nice because if you're doing a big decal like that and it's done in vinyl, you can actually line up the two pieces and then after you press them down, you can seal them. Yes, sir. So on the vinyl substrate, is that with a, so that's not like a peel and stick? It is a peel and stick. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, how do I put it? It's kind of like post-it note well, extra like sticky. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of, it's they make two kinds. Peel off yeah, kind of, okay. yeah, they make, this company makes two kinds. They make regular sticky and extra sticky, okay? I happen to like extra sticky, okay? I don't want my decals falling off, all right? I want to rub them down, and then I want them to stay there. Yeah, pat them down, blot them down. Thank you, Dave. I, <laughs> wrong choice of words. Do as I say, not as, no, do as I, do as I say, not as I do. Right? Do as you do, not as you say. Yes. <laughs> do it right. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> I've been creating my own rocket graphics for five years now. Uh, there's no reason why you can't. The, the materials are out there. Um, the only thing that's going to limit you is your availability of an inkjet printer and a checkbook. Yes, sir, art. What did you use to make the uh, uh, DOS red uh, DOS blue max ah, decals? That stuff that stuff was done, you know, for large quantities, and those those were uh, those were screen printed. Okay, that's what yeah. I thought. Art's talking about a kit that I uh, a rocket that I kitted uh, back in 1990, um, which was uh, a clone of Estes blue red max in a four inch diameter. Uh, that I call Das Blue Max. Great kit too. And I still have decals for it, which Art knows. <laughs> yeah, it's to match the ones for my. So my the difference between my kit and the Estes kit were mine had iron crosses in it, where Estes had the square crosses in it, right? And then my my skeleton was a little different too. My skeleton was wearing a helmet like uh, like Sergeant Schultz in yeah. Hogan's <laughs> Heroes. I know nothing. <laughs> I like your that's, detail. That's, that's who my skeleton was uh, designed oh, after, was Schultz and Sauer. Besides the rocket, too. That's yeah. Schultz and Sauer. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> I, um, here, here are some more examples, and here's the Bluebird Zero down here in the corner. See what I did? That's what you do. You, you just create a box of the color that you want in the background and then lay white text on top of it. And then just <coughs> cut out around the white text 
and then float the decal onto the color on the rocket. And that's how you wind up with your white text on a, on a colored background. Um, this decal sheet, whoops, I'm going to go back. This decal sheet um, was for the tiny little brother of that one, okay? It was the actual design of the month scale model that I built. Yeah, that, that orbital transport laboratory, the original was a BT-60 model that's about this long. And it flies it's great, size. flies great on C-63s. It's just, it's a hoot to fly, lots of fun. Right, it breaks even on every flight, but you know, that's what you pay for when you're doing odd fins like that, right? So, um, super duper Big Bertha, again, you got to find a way to, to make it economical, to fit it all on one sheet. You got to tilt things, you got to do what you got to do, right? Get it all on one sheet. You can do it. It takes time. It takes a little patience. Um, again, up here in the right, upper right hand corner. Um, all the century stuff. I was building <coughs> Mach 10s, and uh, I wanted I wanted uh, window glass for the Mach 10 uh, cockpit. Um, Centurion. I was building a, a Semrock Centurion F, but I wanted it to look like a Centuri Centurion. And um, you know, you just you know, if you like Centuri logos, if you like Estes logos, if you like stars and bars. You know, have at it, have a good time, you know? I mean, that's what this is for, okay? This gives you just another creative outlet that you can use for your rocketry hobby, okay? Um, some other decals that I designed myself, this is for a uh, dual leg lofter. I clicked again, dunk on it. My bad. This is for a dual, uh, this is for a dual leg lofter that I designed. Um, the Argent over here, these are the decals that I used on my uh, Estes PS2 Argent. Uh, down here in the corner, uh, Swift 220. I've got uh, an upscale Swift that's built based on a BT-60 that's about this long. And it uh, flies really nice on, on BNC motors. Um, here at the bottom in the middle, you'll see that very graphic that is on that rocket, the body wrap. Okay, that's 100% created in PowerPoint. You just have to figure out what you want to do. And then kind of let your mind run with that a little bit and see where it takes you. But you can have lots of fun with this, and I hope that you do. Uh, I have lots of fun with it. And I like to think that the results speak for themselves when you look at rockets like this um, because as I said in the beginning my passion is to build good looking rockets and I, I like to think that the decals make the good looking rockets look good so questions Tommy not a question but uh, I want to elaborate a little bit on the water slide decals um, I visited a printing company who made decals WK Walters uh, <coughs> train company yeah sure they were making decals for classic models other than trains. Mm -hmm. The technique was to use a letter press, not an offset press. Yeah. And what they did is they ran, they they made a, a cut oversized for the decal pattern. They ran it through the press twice, printing it varnish, ordinary yep. varnish, yep. clear clear varnish, right, which stays clear for a number of years, but eventually yeah. yellows. Yellows, right. And then after that dries, you get a day or so to dry for each time to the press. They sometimes three times to the press to get the varnish thick enough. Right. And then they use regular printing ink to print the mm -hmm. design on it. Yeah. Now when they go to print the design on it, they change the viscosity of the printing because normally right. printing inks are very thick. Yes. And you get a tooth in that squeezes out and you get a you get a thick outline mm -hmm. of the color that becomes right. objectionable. Yep. That's because the ink is and, I, and and if you if you were like me when you were a kid and you opened the model car box or model plane box and what you wanted to find was you wanted to find those decals that you're describing that had 
the lacquer outline and that each decal was separate on the back yes, of a yes, piece of substrate. Yes, you didn't right. want to have to cut them out. Right. All you had to do with those was make gross right, cuts, right, right. and they turned out to be the right shape after you floated them off the page. Those kind of decals were always the kind that you wanted to find in the box. Right. As time rolled on, those weren't the kind of decals that you ever found in the box because they were way too expensive to make. Yeah. Well, this company, I presume, purchased the water slide paper and then printed on it. Yeah. I, I don't know for sure where they got their water slide paper. Yeah. But then there was a varnish base and then printing ink on top yeah. to do whatever. And there are, there are different colors to the backing paper, too, you know? I mean, it just so happens that this company's backing paper is white, mm -hmm. and so it's very difficult to tell the difference between their white substrate paper and their clear substrate paper. Well, because company, both have company, a white background. This company had the, uh, the, the uh, water slide, underneath the water slide solvent or whatever it was, was a very pale blue. Right. So the, uh, the, the slight tint of the varnish was very evident. Right. And like you say, they, they built up a couple of layers of it, so once it slid off, it had some substance to yep. it that wouldn't fall apart. That's right, yeah, so the decal wouldn't fall apart or disintegrate, yeah. That's why it's important that you finish the decal. That's why you've got to put a spray overcoat on it. One, if you don't put the spray overcoat on it and you put it in the water, it's the colors, the ink's going to run. Okay? Printing ink will. You've got to seal it. You have to seal the ink to the paper. Okay? On an inkjet. On the inkjet, yes. You don't necessarily have to do it with the laser. My experience has been that if you don't do it with the laser, they can be very thin and flexible. And it can be difficult to manage them. So I tend to spray them even if they come out of a laser, just because they make it makes them more manageable for me. That's the reason I do it. It's not because it's necessary, which is what the point that you made. But that's true. It's not necessary to... Uh, to, to final coat the, the uh, laser printing. Do you want to comment about the, you know, the solvents or the setting solutions? Now, these are going over smooth things, so you may or may not need to those. But on these things where you're printing them yourself and using the, the, uh, you know, the oversprays, is that not a good thing to do to use like the Microsol or no, Microsol? So. That, that still work okay with those? I have a lot of capital and I also have a lot of white vinegar. And I use white vinegar a lot to soften my decals. In fact, I, when I was applying the United States decal to the uh, corrugated lacquer on my new SS Mojo, I brushed copious amounts of white vinegar on that decal and then very carefully laid it into the grooves until it was going to stay there. It's straight. Is that straight white vinegar? Straight white vinegar. Straight up. Yeah, white vinegar, straight up. Yes. I hope you all enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much.